Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about uh, the properties of system. In the introductory introductory part of uh, signals and system, we are discussing the properties of system. Okay, there are uh, six main properties of a system, and they are listed here now. First one is uh, linearity. Second one is time invariance. First one is linearity. Second one is time invariance. Third one is memory. Fourth one is causality. Fifth one is stability. And last one is invertibility. Okay. We are going to discuss all these properties individually now. As I said, there are six properties. Okay, I am going to just rename again um, there like first one is uh, linearity second one is uh, time invariance third one is memory fourth one is causality fifth one is stability and last one is uh, invertibility okay let us discuss uh, each one of them individually let's see what these properties uh, states and our first property is uh, linearity If a system, if a system satisfies the principle of superposition, then the system then the system is linear okay. let us see again linearity is if a system satisfies the principle of superposition then the system is linear okay. let's see what is this uh, superposition let us take an example okay let us consider a continuous time signal x of t as the input signal. Okay, let x of t is the input signal and y of t is the output signal for the given input x of t. If x of t is the input signal for the given input x of t, y of t is the output signal. We are just assuming for a continuous time signal. Then for a given input x1 of t plus x2 of t we are having uh, an input x1 of t plus x2 of t and having summation of two inputs if these input leads to an output y of t y1 of t plus y2 of t okay and if the given input x1 of t plus x2 of t summation of two input signal leads to the output y1 of t plus y2 of t and a times x1 of t plus b times x2 of t. Now the input is a times x1 of t and b times x2 of t where a and b are constants. Okay, where a and b are constants, a times x1 of t plus b times x2 of t leads to an output a times y1 of t plus b times y2 of t. 
and if people see here firstly we assumed x of t as input signal for x of t as input signal the output is y of t and now we are taking summation of two input signal x1 of t plus x2 of t leads to an output y1 of t plus y2 of t and a times x1 of t plus b times x2 of t leads to an output a times y1 of t plus b times y2 of t then the system is linear for such an input if the output is like this a times y1 of t plus b times y2 of t then the system is linear okay hope you people understand this is for a continuous time signal this is similar for discrete time signal okay this is similar for discrete time signal only thing is we will replace t by n we will replace all the t by n for discrete time signal this is about uh, linearity okay next uh, the second property is uh, time invariance the second property is time invariance second property is time invariance if the time shift in input signal causes a corresponding time shift in the output signal then the system is said to be time invariance okay you can see here if the time shift in input signal causes a corresponding time shift in the output signal then the system is said to be time invariance okay let us uh, take an example to understand it better example let us consider a continuous time signal x of t as the input and y of t is the output for the input x of t okay for a continuous time signal x of t is the input and y of t is the output for the given input x of t then x of t minus t not results in an output y of t minus t not here we can see the actual signal is x of t there is a time shift in the input x of t x of t minus t not t not is the time shift which leads to which causes a corresponding time shift which causes a corresponding time shift in the output signal here also we are having a time shift of minus t not in the output signal then the system is a time invariant okay for time shift in input signal it is causing a corresponding time shift in the output signal also hence the signal is time invariant this is for a continuous time signal this is similar for discrete time signals 
only thing is we are going to replace uh, t by n for a discrete time signals okay this is about uh, the second property time invariance and the third property third property is a uh, memory let us take a uh, the third property memory as the name itself says we are dealing with the memory memory is nothing but the future and the past values that we are going to remember or we are going to access okay if the output of a continuous uh, time signal if the output of a continuous time signal y of t depends only on the input only on the input x of t at the same time at the same time value of t then the system is said to be memory less system here we can see if the output of a continuous time signal x of y of t the output is y of t for a given input x of t and the value depends only on the present value of t means the same value of t then the system is said to be memory less a system okay to understand it better we will take a different approach for the same thing okay if y of t the output if the output y of t depends both on present and past values of the input if y output y of t depends both on present and past values of the input x of t then the system is said to be memory system okay here we can see the first approach we were discussing about the memoryless system and we are taking the reverse approach for the same definition if the output y of t depends both on present and past values which means it is uh, the output is uh, taking consideration of uh, the present value of the output present value of the input as well as the past values of the inputs then the system is said to be memoryless system okay so sorry then the system is said to be memory system because it is considering the previous values also the present it is not only depend on the present value of the input it is also considering the past values of the input hence the system is uh, the memory system okay this is about uh, the memory and uh, the fourth property is casualty okay let us discuss uh, the fourth property casualty the system is a said to be casual 
if the present value of output y of t depends only on the present and past values of the input x of t here and we can see the casualty the system is said to be casual if the present value of output y of t depends only on the present and the past values of the input x of t the actual uh, like uh, now we are uh, uh, thinking of anything uh, if we want to take an uh, live example if, if we are thinking about uh, any situation uh, we will be thinking of the present situation depending on our present situation as well as the previous things what we have done or the what, whatever the mistakes that we have done in the past we will be taking those consideration and we will be doing the task for today that is casual if we are uh, thinking about the future what will be happening in the future and we are doing the things or the work now that would be meaningless okay we, we can't predict the future right we can only know the present and the past mistakes that what we have done okay depending on those mistakes that we will be doing the present task if we are thinking about the future then it would be then it would be a disaster okay we can't do anything if we think uh, we may do mistakes in the future like that the casualty says the system is said to be casual if the present value of output y of t depends only on the present and past values of the input it is not at all depending on the future values if if the present value of uh, output y of t depends on future value of input x of t then the system is not casual then the system is not casual okay this is about uh, the casualty as we can see here again i'm going to repeat for the system to be casual system to be casual the present value of output depends only on present and the past values of the input if the present value of uh, output y of t depends on the future value then the system is not a casual system okay this is about uh, the casualty and we are moving on to the next property fifth one that is a uh, stability okay. the fifth property is uh, stability a system is said to be bounded input bounded output the system is said to be bounded input bounded output b i b o call it as a bounded input bounded output stable if and only if if and only if every bounded input x of t results 
in bounded output y of t okay a system is said to be bounded input bounded output stable if and only if every bounded input x of t results in the bounded output y of t okay let us consider let us consider a continuous time signal let us consider a continuous time signal if y of t is the output for a given input x of t then we will define stability as the mode of y of t is bounded by a value by which is less than or equal to a bounded value by if the output is bounded by a value by which is always less than infinity which is always less than infinity for all values of t since it is a continuous time signal we are marking it as t the output y of t is bounded by the value by which is less than infinity for all values of t for the input x of t is bounded by the value bx which is less than infinity for all values of t okay as we can see the input x of t is bounded by the value bx which is less than or equal to a value bx which is less than infinity then the output is also bounded by a value by which is less than infinity okay as we say bx and by are finite values okay remember bx and by are finite values and are positive bx and by are finite values and are positive this is for a continuous time signal this is similar for discrete time signal this is similar for discrete time signal hope you people got uh, the stability for a bounded input will always be having the bounded output if it doesn't have a bounded output for a bounded input then the system is not a stable system remember okay since we are having a bounded input and a bounded output then the system is called as the stable system okay now we are moving on to the last property that is uh, invertibility the last property is invertibility as the name itself suggests invertible okay since we are talking about the inputs and the outputs the system is said to be invertible if input of the system can be recovered from the system output it is very simple if you can see if the system is said to be invertible the system is said to be invertible only if the input of the system can be recovered from the system output okay let us take an example to understand it betterly 
let us consider the continuous time signal with an input x of t we can uh, for better understanding i'll just take an example as x of t as uh, water and i need uh, the output y of t as ice okay i am feeding water to a system to get uh, y of t okay to get the ice as the output i need to cool it down which i call it as system 1 in the first system i am going to cool it down so that i'll get a output x of t as y of t and the same y of t is fed into another system to get z of t as output remember I need if the input of a system can be recovered from the system output now I need to recover x of t from y of t now I am getting a z of t it should be equal to x of t okay I need to recover x of t from the system output y of t I am using a system 2 here in the first system I am cooling it down to get uh, ice to get water from ice, I need to heat it up, right? Hence, I can get uh, the output as uh, water, okay? Since I am getting x of t from y of t by heating uh, the ice, then the system is said to be invertible, okay? The system is invertible only if x of t can be recovered from the output y of t by any means, okay? And we need to remember one more point here for uh, system invertibility for system invertibility distinct inputs results in distinct outputs okay for system invertibility distinct input should result in distinct outputs okay this is about uh, properties of system if you people have any doubts uh, please do put a comment message on my comment box we'll be connected thank you